Welcome back, people, to part two of the Upwork Data Science Freelancer series. So in part one, we talked about which platform you should choose, and I argued that Upwork is probably your best choice because it has the largest variety of clients, the best paying jobs, and the best protections among all the platforms. Today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to structure your profile to get views, as well as to get invitations to jobs and to, to set yourself up for success in the long term. And I'll throw myself under the bus and use my profile as an example and point out where I do things probably not the most optimal way. So what you need to know is your profile is made up of several different factors. So you need a, a photo, and it should be a good photo. It shouldn't be a picture of you popping bottles at the club on Friday night. Probably not the best face to put forward when you're trying to get jobs as a freelancer. Your photo should be clear. You should be smiling. You should look professional. Uh, you're also going to have a headline, and that should describe who you are, what you do. And then you're going to have a description that uh, you're going to use for not just copywriting purposes, but also SEO purposes, right? Don't forget that there is a search engine that clients use to find freelancers, and you want to appear near the top of that search engine in, uh, in any crowded field. Um, so let's go ahead and throw myself under the bus here and take a look at my profile. Okay, so let's see if you can see that. So here you can see my ugly mug. So this picture probably isn't the best. I'm kind of zoomed out. Um, you know, I'm not particularly vain, but you know, your face should be kind of more prominently displayed. So eh, I, I guess it's it's okay. I, I wore a suit to look kind of professional. I took off my glasses to remove, reduce glare, but um, it, it's okay. It's so so. I don't think anybody's complained yet, but you know, I could do better. So the next thing you see is the, the headline, Data Analysis and Machine Learning Expert. So the purpose of the headline is to immediately convey what it is that you do. Um, and you could even make a good argument that the headline should, should telegraph what problem you solve. Um, so if you're really niched down, if you're a computer vision expert, you would write your headline to convey that information that you're an expert at, at, at teaching machines to see. Uh, I left it kind of vague, a little bit broad. Uh, I haven't updated this in a while, and you'll see it doesn't really matter all that much, um, at least when you're doing a field like data science machine learning where it's um, pretty low competition. So next you have uh, your description. So I'll go ahead and expand this. So I typically open with a question, and the reason is when people read a question, their natural response is to answer. It's kind of a trick to drive engagement a little bit. And, you know, let's talk. Uh, I'm putting in the suggestion here of us talking. And the reason is that when you go to apply for jobs, you always want to talk to the client. It's a um, kind of getting them a little peek ahead of what's to come. Uh, I talk about my experience at Intel because Intel has brand cachet. You know, I'm no longer there, but uh, if I can leverage it, I certainly should. Nobody else is going to is going to you know sing my praises so I should definitely leverage that I talk about what I did um, and I throw in multi-billion dollar semiconductor manufacturing facility to make it sound important right I mean in reality it was a legacy facility but you know who cares uh, leverage massive data to uncover which tools were costing Intel and our customers now here's the key point is that I'm focused on business metrics the people that are hiring you generally aren't going to be data nerds. They aren't going to be computer nerds like we are. They are going to be focused on making money, driving their business forward, and that you want to speak to that type of language in your profile because you want them to understand that you understand they're in business. I talk about profitability, and then I say what I'm doing now. And this is a weak paragraph. I need to come back and fix this. Turning my attention towards helping businesses make money online. Very vague, could be anything. Uh, reality, I was, I think when I wrote this, it's a kind of a holdover because I was also applying for some web design jobs as well. Horrible idea, don't bother doing that. There's so much competition, and it's really a race to the bottom. But I digress. So I acknowledge, you know, things are different. But the end goal is the same. I can, and what I'm suggesting is I can leverage my prior experience to actually, you know, help the client solve their problems. And then we get to the little SEO bit where uh, I need to come back and beef this up as well. Um, 
but I say I have direct experience in the following technologies and topics. I threw this in there because I went to the top people that appear in the search engine and took a look at what they did, and most of them have some combination of of their skill sets in there. And of course, I can do all of this stuff, but um, its main purpose isn't to telegraph that I can do it. It's to it's to improve the SEO of my profile, the search engine optimization. So this is an attempt to move up the rankings and get seen more often. Um, and also to telegraph that I know these things. And also I close with a question, uh, kind of, uh, not a question, but a suggestion. If you're looking for a freelancer with a broad skill set, minimal oversight, ownership mentality, drop me a line. Um, I should probably change this verbiage that to something like that requires minimal oversight. So this is, I, I would actually now, reading over this rate, rate this is a pretty weak profile. Uh, but I'll show in a second that it doesn't actually hurt me all that much. I get viewed fairly frequently and I get hired quite frequently. So next thing the client is going to see, um, oh, sorry, I digress. One point here. So I use the word expert. I was talking to someone in a, a Discord chat and uh, this individual did not want to use the word, originally had some pushback of using the word expert. And I think the reason is that people have this conception in their mind that an expert is someone who uh, has reached the end of a journey when in reality expertise is a sliding scale. So if you spent a month doing some basic code and machine learning, you are an expert with respect to the general population. After you spent six months, you'll be an expert with respect to where you started. After you spend two years, you know, you'll be even more of an expert, right? Your expertise will continue to grow. It's a sliding scale. It's not a destination. It's not somewhere you go. And it's certainly not a title someone else is going to bestow upon you. Nobody else in this world is going to market you except you. You must take ownership of your own marketing and um, as well as ownership of your performance, right? If you're going to call yourself an expert, you need to be working pretty hard to justify that title, but don't be afraid to use it if you've only been doing this for a uh, kind of a small amount of time. Now, on day one, I wouldn't call yourself an expert, but once you can code your own stuff uh, on your own, then to some extent you are an expert. So don't be afraid of using the word expert or something that has the same connotation. Other things the clients are going to see are job success. Don't worry about that when you're getting started. You won't have a job success score. You can't influence that. The way to get that up is to just do a good job and to always check in with your clients to make sure they're happy with how you're doing. And if they're not, adjust what you're doing. Talk to them. People are reasonable. Don't, uh, don't run away from it. Just own it. Confront it head on. Your hourly rate. Um, and then your, your work history and feedback, all this stuff is going to get filled in as you go along. Now, if you're saying, if one of your objections to, to being a freelancer is, oh, but Phil, I've never done it before. Nobody's going to want to hire me. I have no job history. Well, that's bullshit. So if you take a look at my job history, um, going back six months to a year, I have... I was a marketing writer for product descriptions. I did a little bit of work in a weight loss ebook. I actually think this client died. He totally vanished. Uh, dude totally ghosted me. Uh, his payment method expired or something. Um, he just completely disappeared. In part one, I think I alluded to having a nightmare job. That's this one here where I got a 2.15 star. I'll talk about that in depth in a later video. Uh, a very painful learning experience. But the point I'm trying to make here is that I went ahead and started on Upwork as a writer a couple of years ago and uh, had good success doing that because I could string together two words I delivered on time and you know generally made people happy so of course there isn't much money in that so I had to switch I did AdWords because I wanted to learn the marketing and now I've come full circle to doing more technical stuff but I already have the skills to market my own services and products of course but the point here is that having a work history that was totally and completely unrelated to um, machine learning didn't hurt me in the slightest. Uh, it was it was not difficult to, to get a job at all. So even if you have no history, it's probably not going to be difficult. I don't you know it's probably a toss up between no history or having a unrelated history. 
There's also a space down here for a, uh, a portfolio, so I don't really fill this in. I did a couple websites, put it in. This is a this is buggy where it doesn't show the, the certificate. Um, Upwork is full of bugs. Other important thing is the skill set. So this is part of what people will use to find you. So you want to make this as relevant to what you're doing as possible. So I try to use all the big buzzwords, deep learning, deep neural networks, machine learning, AI, artificial neural networks, things like that. And um, uh, APIs like TensorFlow, that isn't quite as popular as it used to be at least in the job listings, um, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then you can take some tests. I don't test well, so I don't bother. You can see I did a bad score, a below average score on the old AdWords test. Pretty funny. Um, you don't have to do these. Nobody ever asks. Um, things you want to focus on are getting a good photo, um, have someone else take it, make sure the lighting's on point, do good cropping, wear a good shirt, don't be popping bottles at the club taking photos. You know, don't be at the strip club taking photos and putting it up on Upwork. You're not going to have any success. Um, write a good detailed description. Get someone, if you're not a native English speaker, that's perfectly fine, but get someone else to kind of look it over to make sure that it's um, at least cogent, right, coherent. Um, nobody expects uh, foreigners to have great English. Uh, you know, that's not an expectation, but it is important to be able to communicate clearly. So do make an effort to do so. Um, other than that, it, it's going to be as, as simple as, as applying to jobs and then getting uh, clients into a conversation. So I hope that's been helpful. You get to peek inside of my profile and see how I wrote it and give you some ideas on writing your own. Any questions, please leave them below. To continue seeing videos in this series, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit, hit the bell icon so you get notified. I look forward to seeing you all next video. Oh, by the way, one other thing I forgot is the stats. So <laughs> uh, I made the point that um, that uh, even having a subpar profile doesn't really hurt you. So here, I'll prove it to you. So these are the statistics uh, around how often you are viewed, interviewed, and hired. And I'm, if your profile and your title are crap, your, your views will be below average because people won't want to click on your profile because your title is bad, right? They see the title first, the headline, and that tells them whether or not they want to click. What is in the profile is what influences them to interview you. So I suspect name dropping Intel helps me quite a bit. And then the last piece of the puzzle is how often you're hired. So I'm hired uh, pretty, pretty frequently. And the reason for that is uh, I have a fair amount of experience uh, selling uh, my AdWords services. Uh, I spend a lot of time, you know, selling marketing services to people so I understand the process of sales. Don't worry, you don't have to spend a year of your life doing something totally unrelated. In upcoming jobs, in upcoming videos, I'll show you a little bit about the art of sales and freelancing. So just wanted to really quick show you this, uh, show this to you guys that uh, even having what I would consider to be a subpar profile doesn't really hurt you. I could certainly do better by um, getting this view number up right into the more often category because then I'm going to be getting more interviews and hired more often, of course, right? That's just basic logic, but even having something reasonably subpar doesn't actually hurt you. So I hope this has been helpful. Make sure you subscribe.